These new AI-powered Figma features will save you time and unblock your creativity, apparently. That's what Figma are claiming, so let's have a look at the AI beta that's been rolled out recently and see if, as web design professionals, we think these features are any good. Let's begin with perhaps the most notable feature, which will also give us something on our canvas to work with and demo the rest of the features, and that is first draft. So we're gonna open the actions menu here at the bottom. I'll use the shortcut from now on. And if you just type in first, you'll find it here, first draft. And then we need to give it a prompt. So I'm going to do a landing page for an electric guitar. Let's say it's handmade in Canada and then click make it. And it will now start working. And I'm gonna leave this on in real time just to show you how quick it is. And I would say that's pretty quick. We've already got a layout here. And now where we've got these diagonal lines, it's beginning to do some image generation as well. I would say Figma AI's website designer is more kind of first draft. You can use it for not just websites, it's probably comparable to any of the other AI design programs, what do you call it, models that are around at the moment. It doesn't really offer anything better or new, and I wouldn't be using any of these as final designs, but it is amazing how quickly it throws something out. If we just start to scroll through this thing right now, you see we have got several sections here and the kind of thing you would expect to see um, if we're talking about a, a handmade guitar. Now the first thing that probably stands out is the images because you, you know your eye is drawn to that and these are obviously very poor. We have got the wrong number of tuning pegs versus the number of strings and they look very wonky. Um, AI famously being not very good with people's hands, and that's in evidence again here. Maybe having a left hand like that would make it easier to play guitar, but it's uh, it looks strange. Again, the hands are strange here. This to me looks like the AI models from like two years ago. It doesn't compete with the best image generation that is available today, but it has got some images that are relevant throughout without us having to prompt every single one and it immediately gives us these options at the beginning where we can actually click to these different almost themes it changes the colors and the fonts and we can go through here and just click on any one of these until we find one we like so maybe let's go with this one the next thing we can do is then make changes to it and you can also open this as a se separate prompt and it has some automatic things like lie mode or dark mode that we can click on. We can add in a color scheme here and it gives us some prompts. So you can actually uh, pick one out here from um, this whole, you know, uh, color wheel. You can change the radius of the corner. So for example, if you look at the button in the top right, by now we can make that into a full pill shape. Um, where else would that be relevant? Yes, maybe on these cards here and it's rounding the corners out there. We can do this whole spacing, which actually affects like the whole website. If we scroll to the top and you say, if you want a very tight spacing or if you want it to be very sort of spaced out like that. So it gives you these options. And then we can click on to choose different sort of fonts here um, that deviate from the actual, you know, uh, design. Uh, that we we had to begin with. I actually preferred what we have before, which I've now lost, but here we are. Let's just go with that. Okay, I'm gonna click done. So that's the kind of thing you can do to make changes um, very quickly. You can also rewrite things. So if we click on this headline now, and then I'm gonna open the actions menu and I'm gonna do rewrite this. And it gives you some immediate prompts, shorter, more casual. So let's just click make this shorter, click rewrite. And it has changed our headline to something smaller. Let's try maybe longer. 
there we go. And we have a longer sentence now. So if you were creating some sort of, you know, dummy design and you didn't have copy, you can see there where this would be useful as a designer. And it's much better than Laura Mipsum. What it can also do with words is translate. So if we make a copy of this entire page, which is now looking incredibly ugly, and let's call this French because we're talking about a Canadian product. We might want a French version. So I'm going to click on the French frame and then I'm going to type translate. Translate to French. And it'll work on the translation right now. And being a fluent French speaker myself, I can say that this is absolutely perfect. What's amazing is we could even go into something uh, like a non-Latin language, like Japanese, and try that. And again, based on my knowledge of Japanese, I would say this is excellent. So it's pretty incredible how quickly uh, you can you can do that kind of thing. That one I definitely find impressive. A next feature, which is something you would definitely uh, want to use, and often we've relied on plugins to do this in Figma, is to remove a background. So now you can simply search for remove background and there's an uh, AI tool for that. So you don't need to take this into a photo editing software or use uh, a non-native plugin. Hey, presto, it's removed the background straight away. Now it was a bit tricky to be fair around uh, the headstock and these tuning pegs. It's left a little bit of the background in there. So I think it obviously depends on the image as with any remove background tool, but that's pretty darn good considering it's just um, thrown that out, you know, in seconds. And looking at this image, it's quite um, quite difficult with this hazy image and all these small uh, parts around. So with something simpler, that would do the job. The next one, which is useful for all of the, those of you who are not organized as you go through, and that is that you can actually rename your layers. Just collapse the other layers. So we've got this landing page and we'll just open this one for now. So maybe these are all named pretty good. So if we start calling this like, I'm just going to um, make this file look like some of your files. Yeah, I see you. I know. And we click on this and then we're going to open the actions menu and we're going to do rename layers. And if you look here, it has now automatically renamed these to header, logo and navigation, and logo. Pretty impressive. You can also find uh, more images that are similar. So, for example, if I click on this image here of the Luthier um, and open the actions menu and then tap find more like, and it's here at the bottom, and it will actually look within your other files. Or you can look on the community as well for certain uh, images, like say you want to you wanna find an icon or something like that within the community. But within your files or within your uh, entire company, that could be really useful if you're, you know, say working across different files, trying to pull things in from a library. We're searching just based on an image. If you want to make this sort of image separately, rather than just have them all generated, you know, as part of a page automatically, you can also do that. So let's create a frame. And I'm just going to create a standard desktop size frame over here. And I am going to open the actions menu and you can type make an image, which is the name of the action. And then for here, I think I'm going to want a female 30 year old guitar player practicing at home in a modernist lounge room. Let's try that. I didn't give it anything in terms of how I want the image to look in terms of photography and lighting style, but let's just begin with that. And it's given us four options to begin with. These old women appear to be blinking at a random time. So again, I would totally agree that this is very poor compared to the latest image generation models. But if you maybe just were generating you know, a small avatar or maybe something that didn't involve uh, a human that was more simplistic, um, then perhaps this could do the job just to fill things in. But I don't think it's something I'm going to be using a lot right at the moment. The final thing, which 
is impressive is that you can actually prototype using the AI and it will automatically create interactions. Now, let me just show you an example of that. We have this landing page here. I'm just going to make a copy of that again, and I'm going to call this frame features. And let's just make it look a little bit uh, different, maybe, to the other one. Okay, so I've just made this top part slightly different, so it looks like we've gone to another page. And what we can do now is select multiple frames. So I'm going to change the name of this one to home and this one to features. And I'm going to click on both of them. I'm going to select, click and select both of them. And then I'm just going to do the action of add interactions. And it will have a look and think about what's appropriate. And what it's done is it's linked here on the features page. It's added this interaction that when you click, we'll have to zoom in, the logo on the top left, it will navigate back to home. So it understands that that's a convention on the web and it has made that work. And it's done, hmm, but it's not done it right here. On this one, it's actually picked up the that home link and made that navigate to features, whereas really we would want that to go from the word features, which sometimes it seems to get right, but sometimes uh, it doesn't. So I don't like that. So I'm going to delete that one. Uh, and I'm going to try this again. I'm going to change it to features with a capital F. Let's maybe make another one for specifications. And this time it has figured out to link the features link to features and the specifications one to the specifications frame. So more work to be done with that, but really interesting that you can add those interactions now and it will figure that out. So it's definitely worth trying out. Which features are you actually going to use? Let us know in the comments. Remember, if you're new to Figma, check out our free crash courses here on YouTube. And until next time, happy designing.